Okay. Uh, my name is Steven. Uh, I'm a software engineer from the specialty printing, uh, printing group at Zebra Technology. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, present uh, the cloud-based printing API, send the file to printer. Uh, it's a cloud-based uh, technology, allows developer to print label and receipt from anywhere. Uh, this API uh, was released uh, about uh, six or eight months ago, and uh, it's still relatively new. But in today's uh, presentation, uh, I'm going to cover uh, three aspects, what, how, and the demo. Uh, in, in, regard to with, uh, in regard with what, I'm going to cover uh, what is this send file to printer API, and uh, what does it do? and uh, how it looks like. Uh, in re with regard to how, uh, I'm going to cover get started and also how to install your printer uh, to the cloud and how to use this API. At the end, I'm going to follow up with uh, JavaScript's uh, demo uh, so we get some like uh, uh, experience with this API. So first of all, uh, what is this uh, send file to printer API? This is an architectural uh, diagram. Uh, the centerpiece of the diagram is the Zebra Savannah Cloud. Uh, in the diagram, you will find you know, the printers are connected to the cloud. Uh, we have like a mobile printer, desktop printers, and also the tabletop printers yeah, listed here as an example. So all those Link OS printers, they have those web socket, a web link uh, built into or baked into the firmware. So it's already there, that's ready for you to use. Uh, and also the connection to the Safana Cloud is uh, encrypted and secured uh, over the SSL or TLS. So you can rest uh, be sure the communication uh, between your application to your printer is secured. Uh, they probably you already heard about the uh, Zebra data services through the other presentations today. And uh, this send file to printer API is one of uh, the services offered through the uh, Zebra data services. So on this on the left side, you can say you know, uh, this API is a simple REST API. So which means it's non, uh, programming language agnostic. You can call this API from any uh, programming language, so Java, uh, C, C++, uh, plus, or from Android, or from iOS, from, uh, from any programming language, from anywhere, uh, either cloud app, mobile app, or desktop app. So that's really give you the freedom to how you would like to implement a printing solution. And uh, in the diagram, you can say the any API, uh, any apps, either cloud, mobile, or desktop apps, call this API through the uh, Zebra data services and forward the print job to the Savannah uh, cloud. And then the cloud through the secured connection and push the print job to the printer. So uh, what, what does this send file to a printer API can do? You know, uh, so that's people most ask. So they, from the name, you know, as the name indicated, this is a send file to printer, which indicates this is a unidirectional API, allows you to send the content of the file to a printer. So any content as specified by the Zebra program language uh, guide is allowed, legitimate content can be sent to those printers through this API, such as fonts, graphics, Wi-Fi certificates, or any other objects, etc. You can also send the configuration commands, like a set get do, we call it SGD. But however, keep in mind, this is a unidirectional API. So you can only call those set API, uh, set SGD to the uh, printer. You can, if you call the get command, oh, yeah, you will not get anything. So the set and do commands uh, can be sent to the uh, printers through the API. And also you can send those commands through JSON formats. So 
so it accepts the conventional uh, SGD command uh, in text or uh, in a JSON format. The only limitation uh, for the size of the content is 10 megabytes. So you can only go up to 10 megabytes. Uh, here, I uh, <coughs> uh, let me uh, turn off the video. I saw the, uh, the video is complete with the uh, bandwidth of the presentation. Uh, okay, uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, you can call this API from any type of the apps. So what does this uh, API look like? Uh, the image here shows uh, in a curl uh, fashion. So there are like uh, five elements or four elements we can say. Uh, first of all, the API key and the uh, tenant ID or tenant account number goes to the rest request header. So that's why uh, you had you showing here. And then followed with the uh, a printer serial number. So those, uh, those printers, uh, which are connected to the Savannah uh, uh, cloud, uh, would have the ser serial number. So you put the serial number as part of the body of this request, as well as the uh, content. So here we show you example, just a hello world content is a text uh, ZPL command. ZPL uh, format commands in the file. And then the last is the endpoint of this API. So that's a, uh, that's a, a simple explanation of what it looks like. So you have API key, tenant ID, and those two goes to the header of the request. And then body, you would have uh, printers serial numbers and also the uh, file content. But keep in mind, uh, this API allows you to send the content to multiple printers or to one printer multiple times. So if you include the uh, same serial number multiple times, uh, the content of this Hello World will go to that printer multiple times. So if you include a different serial number uh, in this request, the same content will go to different printers. So that's counted as one API call. So you can get those uh, through this API. And uh, finally, that's the end point of the uh, API. <clears throat> so now let's get started. How do I get started? Uh, first of all, you need to go to the uh, developers.zebra.com website. Go to the developer website and log into. If you haven't uh, log in, uh, log into, or you, if you don't have an account, then you would have to uh, go register a final account. So once you register, uh, you can go to the product platform data services under the data services. If you click on the drop down at the, on the packages, uh, you would have seen those uh, send file uh, to printer API uh, packages listed under there. So there are two uh, packages. One package is free. The other package is PPC, uh, pay per call uh, packages. Uh, so you need to choose those two packages. For the uh, free package, you get 100 free API calls each every day. Uh, as mentioned in the prior slides, you can call this API to send uh, the content of a file to multiple printers that will be counted towards as one API call. So regardless of how many uh, printers you could have in that request, that counts towards as one API call. And also you can, uh, purchase the uh, pay per call package. Uh, for the pay per call package, the charge rate is one cent uh, per API call. Uh, it, it's a prepaid, so you have to uh, have a buy balance in your account. So this uh, charge goes against your balance. Uh, after each calls, your balance will get deducted accordingly. Uh, once you have this packages added into your account uh, on the uh, developer portal, you need to verify whether you have truly have those uh, packages in your account listed or not, right? So you log into your, for example, this is uh, my demo account, log into the developer website, and then uh, uh, click on the platform uh, under this uh, uh, the product and it goes to uh, data services. And under data services, uh, you select the packages and then click on the purchase uh, plan tab so that's where you will see uh, those packages you uh, purchased 
uh, listed under here. Uh, here you can see uh, when the package started date and also the date uh, when it's going to get renewed. The renew goes uh, automatically, so you don't have to worry. Uh, in my case, in this Tesla account, I started the uh, the plan yeah, back last year, and uh, I uh, continue use it until now. You know, so the end date of this slide was made last year, so uh, you see the date is still old. But actually, I'm using the uh, this package right now. Okay, uh, once you have the packages added into account, now the next step is to add an app. So this app is just a, a name place. Uh, you give it a name you know, where you put into your dev account as an app name. So what do you, uh, how do you create an uh, app? You just go to the My Data Services, click on the apps, that will pop up a, a new window. So where you can, yeah, Input the app name. Uh, here I just take the default a new app as an app name for this uh, demo. Uh, and then I would have those packages listed here. So far I checked the uh, check mark the free package here. So just want to mention here uh, you either check the uh, send the file to printer free package or choose the PP uh, C package, paper call package. You don't we don't suggest you to choose both. So if you choose both, this API call will be factoring for both uh, free package as well as a PPC package. So you get deducted for the free 100 call uh, as well as charged by one cent against your uh, PPC package. So we recommend that you only check one package for your app. Once you ha have an app, then you will have a key. The key is associated with one app. So to check the app key, so you go to the uh, My Data Services as well and click on the apps, and you will have the newly created app. The name is a new app, right? Listed right under there. If you click on the keys tab, uh, you would say the key is in the red box. That's a API key. We give it a name, a like consumer key. That's actually the API key. You need that key. Uh, when you call this API. Uh, okay, uh, this is the API key. Uh, now, the next step, you need to install your printer uh, to the uh, Savannah Cloud. So how do, we, how do we do that? Yeah, fortunately, there is an interface that allows you to do that on the developer portal. Uh, you also go to the developer portal, go to My Services, uh, the, the my data services and then devices. So you you click on my data services devices. Then you would have you know uh, if you already have the printers registered, uh, installed with uh, Savannah Cloud, you would have them listed here. If you don't see them, or if this is the first time you you know, uh, try to install your uh, printer, you simply click on the add device. So that will pop up a new interface allows you to choose the type of the device. So for printer, you choose a printer uh, as a device type uh, and also select your uh, talent ID. The, the talent would be your email address. So this is my uh, email address used for the demo purpose. And then click on the get enrollment string. Uh, once you have the enrollment string clicked on, you would say this string yeah, popped up. This string popped up. Uh, th this is the exact, exact string yeah, you need to use. Here, I want to yeah, uh, explain a little bit more about th this string. So this is a JSON string. Uh, has uh, three elements in this JSON. Uh, the first element is to config the log entry uh, in the web link for up to 500 logs. The second entry uh, would be the uh, web link uh, connection ID. So there are two connection locations on the on the link o, uh, OS printers. Uh, we number it uh, location one and location two. So connection one, connection two. By default, this uh, tool generates uh, the enrollment string with connection one. So that's why you see the connection one right here, right? 
but uh, if you prefer to configure your connecting tool to connect to the uh, Savannah cloud, you can change the number uh, from one to two in this string before you send this string to the printer. So in this string, it connects the, the Savannah cloud uh, uh, URL uh, as well as our R value. So they highlighted here. So this R value is a talent ID. Uh, talent ID is associated with your uh, account, uh, which opened uh, by your by input your email address, right? So each email address on the Zebra Developer Portal would have one talent ID. So this is a unique ID per e per account on Developer Portal. The last thing, last thing on this uh, uh, instrument string is to reboot, uh, reset the printer. So that is required in order to make sure the previous two uh, elements take effect on the printer. And uh, for detail, where to get the uh, tenant ID uh, in different ways, uh, you can refer to the either tenant services. That's where another place allows you to get a tenant ID, uh, as well as there's the uh, printer setup guide you know, allows you to get a tenant ID uh, differently. So here we are not going into detail on that. So once you have that string uh, with you, uh, you can send that string to the printer. So I'm going to uh, yeah, uh, mention a few ways to send that string to the printer. Uh, you can uh, use the uh, send, send or send file uh, functions uh, in the uh, printer setup utility for Windows, Android, or iOS. So for the, uh, the we have a, a printer setup utility app for Android and iOS. Uh, you could use a send function uh, on those uh, uh, apps. But in order to do that, uh, you would have to yeah, pass the pass out the stream yeah, to the mobile device and save it as a file uh, so that uh, you know, uh, use the printer setup utility on Android and uh, iOS uh, could find that file. So you could send that file uh, to the printer through the Bluetooth connection. Uh, if you, uh, you have a PC you know, next to you and uh, which connects to the printer through the USB, uh, you can use the setup utility for PC for Windows you know, uh, to send that string to the uh, printer. So uh, it's a quite simple and easy. You simply copy paste that string into the uh, box on the top uh, and then click on send to the printer. That will send that uh, uh, a string to the printer and uh, the printer will uh, take a reset. Uh, if you have a Zebra designer drivers yeah, installed on your printer, uh, you can directly open the driver, uh, select the printer, uh, which you want to send that string to, and click on the uh, Manage uh, button, and it will uh, pop up the printer dialog. You select the printer property, and it goes to the driver settings, and then settings. That's where you would say the send file uh, function uh, here, and then you navigate to where you have this function uh, stored, uh, and then send that to the printer. So once you send that uh, to the printer, uh, and then you need to verify uh, whether the printer has uh, successfully uh, connected to the Savannah uh, cloud uh, platform or not, right? So uh, there is one way uh, you could do it. Uh, you, you simply just open up the uh, setup printer setup utility for Windows and connect to the printer through the USB and uh, send this command, uh, get var, a web link command, that will uh, give you all those logs so far has been captured on the printer. And uh, in this log, you would search for uh, those uh, uh, entries. Uh, those entry indicate uh, you know, either connection 1.1 or 1.203, or doesn't matter, we will increment either if we are using connection one. If you change the connection one to, change, to connection two, before you send that uh, instrument string to the printer, you would look for the uh, con two uh, dot something. You know, find those string, you know, uh, if it says successfully connected, which is well indicated now the printer uh, has been registered with uh, the Savannah Cloud and it's uh, ready to use. If you have some errors doesn't so show those uh, uh, statements in your uh, log entry. And you may need to check two things on your printer. First, 
make sure there is no typo in that enrollment string when you send to the printer. And uh, secondly, uh, make sure the date and the time on the printer is current, because I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, this uh, web link or web socket connecting to the Savannah cloud uh, is encrypted. And uh, we have a certificate uh, tied to those connections. And the certificate will be verified, validated by the server uh, through the dates. So if the date and time on your printer is too off and uh, forced out of the uh, validity window of the certificate, you will not get the successful connection. So you need to make sure the date and the time on your printer is uh, current so that uh, you can uh, have the printer successfully register uh, with the Savannah Cloud. Uh, so that's something you uh, keep in mind. So that we have seen that happen quite often because some of the printers may not have a battery and uh, after the power off, the date and the time you force off uh, to its original uh, date and time of the firmware uh, when the firmware were built, which could be far off from the uh, validity of the uh, certificates. So you need to make sure, always make sure your printer has the latest uh, date and time. And there's another way to check uh, whether the printer has registered with, uh, uh, with the cloud successfully or not. You can go through the portal as well. So just go to the uh, login to your portal, uh, go to the uh, data services, uh, and at least click on the devices. So if you have a printer list here, and you can register for sure, now your printer has successfully registered with the cloud. So here, yeah, just to show you example, I have those printers uh, registered here. Uh, and then uh, you could, could run some like a uh, uh, testing. So there are a few ways to uh, do the testing. Uh, the first, uh, the easiest, easiest way for you to uh, test is uh, still yeah, use our uh, uh, developer portal. Uh, once you navigate to the send file to printer API portal, and you will be presented with this interface. So that's where you copy paste your key and the tenant ID and uh, the uh, serial number of your printer, as well as the file you, know, you want to send, and then click on execute. That will send the print job right to your printer. So you can uh, you can see how a printer reacts. So that's the one way uh, to do the testing. Another way to use the Postman, so you have to download this tool, uh, which is a, a free tool, uh, widely available. You download it, you put the API key and the tenant ID as part of the uh, header and the, in the body, uh, you uh, this screenshot doesn't show the body. So you click on the body and then put the uh, serial number as well as uh, choose a file uh, you want to send and click on send. That will send the, uh, the content of the file to the printer as well. And the third way is through the curl. So that's uh, for Unix uh, uh, people. They would like to yeah, use a uh, curl. Uh, that's quite a straightforward way. It's av available on the PC as well as on the Mac through the Segwin. So you can type in uh, uh, this uh, curl commands. So I want to just uh, we have already shown this uh, on this on the slides previously. Here you can see the uh, API key and the tenant ID uh, right part of the header of this request and those are the printer serial number. So you can have multiple serial number listed as part of the body, right? And finally, you uh, attach the, the file, yeah, which you want to send to uh, this request. And you can only send one file at a time. So you cannot send two files, you know, just one file at a time. And finally, that's the end point of the CPI. Uh, this is, uh, this is a uh, code snippet uh, in Java. So in order to make it simpler and uh, easier, we create uh, Zebra SFTP MP body publisher dot Java class. So this is the hyperlink. Uh, you can click on this hyperlink, uh, which leads to where you can copy paste the source code of this class. So what it stands for, it stands for Zebra send file to printer, multi-part body publisher. So how to use this Java class? Uh, we first we you know uh, we have to 
specify the endpoint of this API as well as uh, the serial number API key tenant ID and also the file right you want to send this uh, uh, you want to send out uh, and also you just simply uh, call this uh, uh, body publisher class and create an object and the passing you know uh, because it's a body publisher so for the body part you have to put the serial number as well as the uh, file uh, into the body part so what we did is so we add the serial number uh, three times just to indicate you can add the you can add multiple uh, serial number or multiple times uh, so you can simply call call this uh, dot add the sn you know with a different serial number or with the same serial number multiple times and that's a, a body publisher and the object and then you compose this header Right, with this header, you, ha you have to, there are a uh, few elements for the header. You have to specify the endpoint of the API, the API key, and also talent uh, ID, as well as a content type. So here we mentioned that this is a multi-part uh, content, right? And uh, you specify the, the form data multi-part. Uh, since it's multi-part, you have to def uh, pass in the, the boundary, right? The boundary, we have a helper uh, in the, uh, publisher, you just call get boundary that will uh, set a boundary in this uh, request header, and uh, then you create the uh, client and uh, uh, make a request. I uh, call a send send this request yes, through this uh, HTTP client that goes to uh, the printer and from your Java application. Uh, the next code slip is uh, is uh, uh, from the Java JavaScript. So we are going to demonstrate the JavaScript uh, demo at the end of the presentation. Uh, here we do the same. It's much simpler though. So we don't need to create uh, any like a special uh, class to, to publish the body. Uh, we simply use the XML uh, HTTP request, right? Oh, sorry, let's go back. We simply use the XML HTTP request and we'll pass in the uh, endpoint as a post right, and then stick the API key and talent ID to the header, right, and uh, for the body part, we create the form data, and uh, we specify the, uh, the file uh, which we want to uh, send to, uh, and then we add the serial number, append the serial number to the form data, and then we call the HTTP.send to send the form data uh, to the uh, through the network, uh, through the cloud, through the printer. So that's a JavaScript. So uh, this is the last slide uh, before we go into the uh, demo. Uh, I want to show the the resources uh, yeah, uh, used by this uh, presentation. So they are all hyperlinks uh, as well as uh, uh, the links uh, directly uh, printed out here. So you can go there to uh, either refer uh, to this uh, uh, blog get all the details about this API, or go to the uh, get started uh, guide uh, for Savannah, uh, for Zebra data services, or go to the uh, printer uh, setup guide uh, for the detail of how to install your uh, printer uh, to the Zebra cloud. For the demo, we are going to show you uh, this demo, the source code is available uh, on the GitHub. So the link is right here and it's uh, this is a hyperlink and you can go there uh, quite easily. So now before, uh, now let's, uh, let me close this uh, presentation. Okay, uh, bring up the, the demo here. Uh, okay, hope you can see my screen. Oh. Okay. Uh, so now I, ha I have uh, the cloud, print from the cloud JavaScript demo uh, on my MacBook. Uh, it's based on the uh, Apache HTTP D, uh, daemon. Uh, so I put that in a document folder and we launch it straight away. So you can say it from the local host. Okay, let me make this as a, okay. Uh, as I want to make it as a separate window.
Okay, uh, here, uh, this demo, you know, at least a uh, few uh, kind of like uh, FII information for you. And uh, we have uh, three uh, different demonstrations at least here. Oh, we have somebody asking question. I will address the question at the end of the uh, demo. Uh, the first demo is the send file to the pre, uh, to send the file content example, and then followed by template printing. And the last thing is the reset re printing example. So for the send the file content example, uh, let's say I pre-populated the, the endpoint, uh, my API key, and also my tenant ID. Uh, once you download the demo from the GitHub, you have to insert, replace them with yours. So I have this printer uh, installed, uh, already installed with the uh, Zebra Cloud. And you can see I have this uh, printer right here. So this is, this is a printer. This is a ZQ310. Uh, this is a ZQ610. So I have two printers uh, installed into the cloud. Uh, and if I go to here, uh, I want to add one more printer. So this is a six uh, a three, ZQ three ten. I want to add ZQ uh, six ten. I copy paste the ZQ six ten the the uh, serial number. I copy paste. Add this right here, right? And then I want to print uh, a hello. World message. Uh, this let me choose here. There is a hello world. So the, this is a ZPL. You can see here. They simply print out a one line te in text. Hello world. Okay. I want to send this to the printer. So let me grab my uh, camera here. So I have a camera uh, right here. See if it's still alive. Yes, still alive. Okay. So let me print, uh, send this uh, to the printer. So I got a return successfully. So you see the, the print job, yeah, goes uh, through successfully. Uh, do it one more time. You, you see, yeah, we can do it multiple times. Okay. So that's a demo to send uh, sample content. And also those content, uh, also those content uh, can be uh, configuration as well. So let's, uh, let, let me uh, choose a different kind of, before I do that, let me first check, okay. This is, uh, let me refresh this window and refresh this as well. Okay, so the reason I want to show you here uh, the the label length is set to 300 dot for the ZQ10 printer, and the label length for the uh, for the ZQ10 is set to 100. So if I want to set uh, the label length for both printers to 600 dot, so what do I do? I go here. I choose. Uh, a different configuration file. So set uh, the, so that's a set of lens, that's a you know, JSON format to 600 dots. Okay, so I use this file. I send this to my printer. Okay, it went through successfully. Let me go back. So I need to refresh this. So if I refresh, you, you see, the lens changed to 600. And uh, for this one as well, let me refresh. Okay, change it to 600 dots as well. So you can you can send the print job as well as a configuration command to this printer. You can even reset the printer if you like. Uh, like here, I already have the uh, reset uh, uh, JSON. So that's a conventional format of, of the STD command uh, to reset the printer. So I'm not going to execute it because I'm going to run uh, other demos. So you can send this as well, okay? So let's go back to uh, a second demo to print out the uh, template, uh, to the template pr printing example. So this is a, a screenshot of the template uh, I'm going to show here. So I use the Zebra Designer for developer tool, uh, which is a design tool allows you to 
design whatever labels you would like. So I have a, another session uh, uh, at the end of today to cover the Zebra designer for developer. And it will generate uh, the output like this, this uh, visitor badge. So with the name and the company and the issue data, yeah, et cetera. So I'm going to show that, okay? So first of all, uh, I'm going also going to add uh, the second printer. So I want to print as uh, on both uh, printers. And then I choose the, the badge, visitor badge. So this is the output of this template. This template, this file is used by the Zebra designer for developers, uh, the design tool. The output is this one. So I simply uh, open this in my JavaScript. Okay, so it allows me to type in the name. Okay, uh, Dave talks. Okay, let's uh, print it out. Uh, you can watch the watch the video camera. Okay, so yeah, print out the meter badge yeah, on both printers. Okay, uh, pretty neat. Uh, then the third, third uh, demo is, uh, you know, uh, have to do the reset uh, printing. Okay. Uh, here is a screenshot. I also use the uh, Zebra Designer for developers, this tool, to design my reset. Okay. Uh, so with reset, you would have the uh, first, you would have the reset re uh, header, right? Uh, this is the reset uh, header, and then you have each item has its own uh, uh, template. So we call it body, and then followed by the footer. So that's a footer. So the three parts, the three separate independent ZPO will be connected together to form a reset. So that's uh, the, the way to print out the reset. Uh, because the variables, uh, especially the body, is has a variable length depends on depending on how many items you purchase. So that's why we have uh, three separate uh, ZPLs. So we use a tool. So the final formation would look like this. So that's a uh, that's what that's how it look like. Okay. Uh, let's uh, run this demo. I also would like to add the second printer here. Copy paste, and then I need to choose the output from the reset template. So that's my, re, no, that's used by the Zebra designer for developer. So I need to choose this one. Okay, it's a text. Okay, I open this. So now it gives me some, is a header. This is a he, header fields, right? This is a uh, uh, body part of each item you purchase. So finally, that's a uh, total, this is a total. Now I want to add another part. Uh, could it be Apple and uh, price uh, just three dollars. And then, uh, unfortunately, this is demo doesn't do the total sound, so you have to manually add this app. Uh, so that would be yeah, plus five dollars. One. So that would be the total plus five dollars, okay? And then I want to print out the, the receipt. So that's a re, uh, receipt printed out. So you see it's uh, 1,000 uh, uh, and four dollars, etc. So I can do this multiple times. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I forgot to change the orientation. So that's why it prints the backwards, but however, as a reset, uh, yeah, when you're facing the printer, so now we are looking at the printer the backwards. So when you're facing the printer, you would say the reset the print out upright. So uh, that's uh, conclude uh, my my demo. Okay, let's uh, go back to the uh, presentation slide. Okay, uh, now let's uh, address uh, the questions. Uh, let's say, yeah, what question you have? 